The ancient Greeks are the most dangerous people ever to have walked the earth. Their history and their culture, but a few moments in time, possess all the potential of a nuclear atom. But their energy is not to be measured in kilotons. The potential of ancient Greece must be measured in liberation. For to understand Greek culture, to split that Hellenic atom is instantly to become free, that most dangerous of existences. Believing that man should neither rule nor be ruled, fearful not of a dark and hateful death, they who created a time and a place in which one could be both intelligent and happy, and happy through intelligence, lovers of beauty without losing simplicity, lovers of wisdom with no loss of virility, the ancient Greeks were the first to conceive of what it meant to live a full and free human life, and were the first to attempt to live it. How and why did they reach such rare and revolutionary ideals? To answer that, you have agreed to meet me at sunrise. John Ruskin, who inspired this tour, said that a person of genius remains in great part a child, seeing with the large eyes of children in perpetual wonder, conscious of infinite ignorance and yet infinite power. Emerging from a charred and illiterate darkness, Greece's first centuries were our own childhood, a cultural youth in which we were wise, in which we were whole, in which we were free. To revisit that youth is to see with perpetual wonder our own individual but infinite power. To walk through the history of ancient Greece is to be reminded of the potential which we might all fulfill if only we kept to the promises of youth. To that end, I welcome you to Hellas and to the Stones of Athens tour, where you're about to explore the development of the ancient Greek soul. As that soul transforms from unthinking to reflective to uncertain, as Greek history moves from epic to tragedy to philosophy, and the Greeks themselves go from heroes to statesmen to neurotics, over the next three mornings you'll see what formed that soul, what newnesses it created, and where it went after it died. It's in Athens that the most powerful elements of the Greek soul converge. So you're about to embark upon a history of both ancient Greece and the city in which all of its energies focused and refined themselves, and from which soon emanated the regenerative transformations that make ancient Greece the still point of a turning world. The mountains, the trees, the dust, breathe it all in. And remember that this was once your life, and once our fate. Of this you may dream, to this you are permitted to aspire, for ancient Greece is your home, though forgotten. It's the environment in which we grew up, the backyard of our own audacious childhood. It is, unashamedly, the following brilliant stones that you might once again raise. In order for me to show you just how dangerous, free, and fully human were the ancient Greeks, I ask you to rise and meet me on the hill of hills to at dawn ascend the steps that look up to the gate through which gods and goddesses, scientists and architects, artists and poets, philosophers and madmen all walked before you. And here we shall begin the Stones of Athens tour. <laughs> 